In this video, I'll cover what it takes to make a successful YouTube channel, the tools and techniques needed to promote it, and how to make it appear professional. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. I'm Simon Yates from The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button, and all the links to everything I've talked about in this video are in the description below. I started my channel three almost four months ago. I didn't know what I was doing, and like many of you, I thought of creating a channel for some time. I really liked the idea of making extra money doing something that I enjoyed. It's far more enriching than binge-watching Star Trek, isn't it? Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. For my first video, I spent time creating the set and made sure it was framed properly. I turned on all the kitchen lights and added additional house lights for additional illumination. I thought I was making high-quality video. I was happy with the quality. I was aggressively using jump cuts more than anyone had done before on YouTube. I was proud of myself. I thought I was producing high quality videos like professionals. I produced three more videos. I made adjustments to each one. But as you can see, and here, the A7S II, the A6600. I had a long way to go. I wasn't producing the professional level videos that I thought I was. Even now, I have much to improve on. It's clear to me now that my audio was terrible. My lighting was horrible. I had harsh shadows all over my face. I even shot my first video with a camera on full automatic. Exposure kept changing throughout the video. But I was determined. I was willing to commit six months to improving my content. I was not going to give up. I learned from other channels as you are watching me now. I watched Sean at Think Media, Maddie, Gerald Undone, Camera Conspiracies, and many others. The first thing you need to do is develop a plan. And the first step towards developing a plan is having a vision. I'm a certified enterprise architect. I understand the need of a clear vision, establishing clear goals and objectives, and expected outcomes. I came up with my own vision, a desired future state, a mental picture of what I wanted to achieve over time with my channel. A vision keeps me focused and prevents my channel from going from one unrelated topic to another. My vision is to deliver informative news, rumors, reviews, and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. I have several main topics. News and rumors, camera reviews, filming techniques, and tutorials. This video fits in with tutorials. A vision can change over time, but it should not change frequently or it defeats the purpose of having one. Next, I came up with goals. A goal is a description of what I expect or hope to accomplish. Goals bring that vision closer to realization. These are some of my goals. Improve audio, lighting, presentation skills, content creation, and so on. I can repeat these goals out loud all day long, and I'm not going to get any closer to achieving them without some objectives. And that's because objectives are specific. They're realistic, they're attainable, they're time-based, and most importantly, they're measurable. This is my call to action. My objectives were to reach 100 subscribers in two months, deliver a quality-based video each week, report rumor analysis immediately, reply to comments and questions within 24 hours, and spend two hours a week learning methods to improve my channel. My objectives have changed since then, and, your and yours will too over time as you achieve them and prioritize others. With my objectives, goals, and vision to guide me, subscribers, views, and likes started increasing quickly. I got to 100 subscribers within a few weeks. I reached 1,000 subscribers a month later and managed to get 4,000 watched hours before the end of three months. At one point, I was producing seven videos a week in order to report rumor analysis immediately. But that objective paid off. One rumor video, the one about the EOS R Mark II, got me 2,100 watched hours, 273 subscribers, and enough momentum, momentum to get me monetized. YouTube also provides a method of measurement analysis, and that's through their powerful analytics platform to help understand the overall performance as well as the reach, engagement, audience, and revenue that you get from your channel. YouTube Analytics is often overlooked by new YouTubers, but it's a very, very powerful tool. Analytics provides you information about who's visiting your site, what languages those viewers speak, their age group, sex, what videos they watch, how much of a video they watch, and what engagement tools they interact with. 
Review these results to understand your audience, their habits, and how to engage with your channel. Consider this information when designing your content and graphic overlays and decide which language to provide subtitles. Yep, subtitles. You see, YouTube automatically generates subtitles for your videos in your default language, so make sure you've selected your default language. To view audience analytics, click on the audience. Scroll down to top countries. Here your audience is broken down by their geographic region. Create subtitles for 10 languages represented by these countries. After creating subtitles, my traffic doubled. The first step to creating subtitles is to create your main subtitle file. Reach breaks down traffic sources, shows top search terms, top external sources, and which playlists are most popular with your viewers. Are you advertising your channel on Facebook, WhatsApp, or VideoMax? This page will show you which sources are the most effective at returning viewers. Using cards and end screen elements, engagement shows you which ones are the most effective at captivating your audience. The audience tab tells you about who is watching your videos. Most of my audience ranges in ages from 25 to 64, so I avoided slang. I avoided acting hyper. I speak in a tone and manner that I believe appeals to this age group, which is closer to my own style. Don't spend every waking hour in analytics, but keep an eye on it to see how your videos are performing against your performance indicators. YouTube Analytics provides measurements on how well you are delivering on your objectives. It doesn't have to cost much to improve audio, but choose your location with good acoustics. Hardwood floors, ceramic tiles, or concrete walls create echo and make for very bad audio. Rooms with carpet and wall hangings make for better studios. Don't use the camera's internal microphone at all. The audio is terrible. I use a lavalier mic. It clips onto my shirt and records full sound into the bass unit right here. I then synchronize that audio later in Final Cut Pro. But this can also be done manually. To manually sync audio from the lavalier mic, make a loud sound clap when you start filming. This clap can be used to manually line up the two audio sources. The key to getting this right is zooming in. Once aligned, disable the camera audio source and the difference is huge. Do you want to know what it takes to make a successful YouTube channel? Want to know the tools? There you go. Much better audio than using internal microphone. But there is still room for improvement. To increase the fullness of the audio, I added adaptive limiter, channel EQ, and compressor audio effects. I won't go into a lot of detail as we could be here for a good 20 minutes or so just on these three effects. I'll show you how to set them up though and toggle them on and off. I adjusted gain from 3 dB to 4.5 dB, set out ceiling from 0 dB to minus 1 dB, and left everything else the same. Channel EQ looks a little more complicated and scary, but it's just punching in a few numbers. Follow me and enter the following information from left to right. Change the first field to 80 Hz, 18 dB, and 0.71. The second field should be 75 Hz, 0 dB, and 1. The third field is 100 Hz, 0 dB, and 0.6. The fourth field is 250 hertz minus 2.5 dB at 1.1. The fifth field is 750 hertz, 0 dB, and 0.6. The sixth field is 4000 hertz, 1.5 dB, and 0.6. The seventh field is 7500 hertz, 0 dB, and 1. And the last one is 10,000 Hz, 12 dB, at 0.71. And now for the last one, compressor. Change the threshold to minus 6. Set the ratio to 2.9. Makeup stays at 0, as does auto gain. Change knee to 0.6. Attack to 2.5 and release to 150.
that's it. I'll do a proper video on auto editing in another video and I explain what we were all doing there. But for now, this is going to give you a much better, more full audio. I just wanted to show you what to do to adjust your audio. You might also want to adjust the overall audio level if it's too low or high. This of course will depend on your audio source. Lighting is very important. I use multiple light sources in front. I have two light sources in front of me, but not shining directly on me. This avoids harsh shadows and shiny skin. I set the color temperature to 5600. This is the color of normal midday sunlight. I'm using a green screen behind me, so I have another light on it, and I've set the color temperature there to 3200. But I still have room for improvement. I have ordered two more lights to shine on the back of me to help better separate me from the green screen. I'm not going to have this fixed for a while yet. It's still all trial and error. But that's why I'm at 2,000 subscribers and not 200,000. Editing shouldn't be difficult if you have a good audio source and good lighting. When I first started, I used to spend an hour fixing audio with each video. I keep my edit simple. I record my audio in long segments without interrupting to avoid needing lots of jump cuts. I use B-roll and graphics to break up long segments. Graphic, graphics help represent complicated or detailed content. In a recent video, I discussed the new capabilities of the Nikon D6 against the Canon 1DX Mark III. It was a long video filled with lots of detail. Without this graphic, it would have been difficult for my viewers to follow along. The graphic uses a heat map which involves the use of colors to convey a single meaning. In this case, which camera provides the capabilities that I'm looking for? I create all my graphics in Keynote, but you could easily do it in PowerPoint. Once created, I enter presentation mode and do a screen grab. This ensures that all graphics have the same aspect ratio. I use a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, but you could just as easily do as do 4 to 3. I use simple butt cuts between clips. Avoid complicated transitions or effects. They're distracting and appear less professional and will push viewers away. Oh, I almost forgot. Don't forget to do a white balance before your videos. I use this white card every time. I hold it right against my face at the beginning of each video. Then in post, it's just a matter of using the eyedropper tool to manually set the balance correctly. Once your video has been edited together, you still have a way to go. Choose your title, description, and keywords carefully. This is how people find your channel and your videos. The title and description should be clear and concise and related to your content. The title should be catchy and interesting. People should want to watch the video, but don't get into any of that clickbait. The description should also be clear and concise, but no more than a line or two. Only the first 20 words or so will show up when potential viewers are looking at the thumbnails. Tags are the search criteria people will search on. A tag can contain more than one keyword. Title and description elements should be in your tags. There are free tools that can help you build your tags. I use, two's, I use TubeBuddy and vidIQ. I like how vidIQ scores my tags. I usually develop my tags or keywords ahead of time and then use vidIQ to validate them once I'm ready to publish. Video art is very important. I use Canva.com to create artwork for each of my videos. It's free, although it does have some paid options. The free content, though, is more than sufficient enough for what I'm using. Keep your art simple, but engaging. Look at other channel art. Look at mine. Find a style, style that works for you. Your video art should complement your video title and description in order to pull viewers in. Never publish your video immediately after uploading. It does take YouTube some time to generate that 1080p version, as well as subtitles. You do not want the first impression of your channel to be a low resolution video. I usually schedule my video for no less than one hour after upload and extend it if needed. After the video is published, make yourself available to respond to viewer questions and comments. This is a good opportunity to engage your viewers and show your appreciation for their participation and views when they could easily be watching other channels. The editing process provides an excellent opportunity to assess what didn't go so well while you were editing the content. Use this as a learning opportunity for future videos. Don't go back and reshoot the whole thing. Don't drive for perfection. No one expects perfection. Your viewers are happy to see that you're investing in your channel and getting better with each video. Don't believe me? 
Go look at the earliest videos of your favorite channels. See how bad they were. You need to review, tweak, and publish. Before long, it's going to become second nature to you. If you're still watching and thinking about starting a channel, or you've just begun, this might seem overwhelming. Starting and growing a channel requires a lot of time and effort. You are always improving and learning. It first starts with a vision of your channel, some goals and objectives. Don't get lost in the details. Don't try to make every video perfect. Perfection is elusive. Perfection is expensive and emotionally draining. Keep your visions and goals close by. Perhaps make it a screen, a screen saver. Uh, with each video, review, tweak, and publish. Make each new video better than the rest. Keep your goals and objectives current. There's always something to improve. And listen to your viewers' comments. Don't ignore negative comments, especially well-written ones, as people took time to provide feedback. I thought my audio was good, but a few comments was a huge reality check. I also have a day job, and that leaves me with three or four hours each evening to work on the channel. I spend another eight hours on the weekend. That's about 20 hours a week minimum. Some weeks, it's much higher. Some weeks, I've spent the entire weekend on content creation and as much as five hours each weekday. You're going to feel like there's not enough time. You need to prioritize. Don't overwork yourself. Determine what content gets produced first, what you need to learn and fix, grow your channel, and still have time for life afterwards. It's like starting a new challenging job that never lets up. So, is it worth it? Well, I'm enjoying it, but what about the pay, right? I get asked about that a lot. Until you get monetized, essentially you're working for free. I was fortunate. I got monetized in my third month. Some people wait years. In my first 28 days of monetization, I made about 320 US dollars. 20 hours a week for four weeks is 80 hours. That's $4 an hour. And if we add in all that time I spent getting monetized, that works out to be less than a dollar a day. Shocking, isn't it? As I stated earlier, this is a hobby for me. I love editing and shooting video. I enjoy engagement. It's a great learning experience and how many hobbies at least provide some level of pay. As long as it's fun, I'll keep doing it. It's not so much about the money. The money gets put back into gear. If you're serious about developing a channel, you'll need to be honest with yourself about why you're doing it and the level of commitment that you're going to have to put in. I will continue to publish videos about my progress and my lessons learned. It's a lot of work and very little pay. Sure, it's possible to make it big, but it takes regular and consistent commitment. And I'm not giving up. The main reason I reached 1,000 subscriptions and 4,000 watched hours in less than three months is that I was smart enough to seek help. I developed key contacts. Very early on, I reached out to Peter Gregg. Peter spent much of his life working as a photographer. But then he started his channel 10 years ago. On his site, he offers advisory services for 30 US dollars a call. So I asked him, Peter, review my channel, offer me advice. Well, Peter gave me a lot of advice that saved me months of hard work and going down the wrong direction. Peter has become a friend, and over the months, I'm happy to have provided him with some useful advice too. But Peter's not the only person I've networked with. I've also reached out to several rumor sites. Being able to publish timely and credible rumors over the past six weeks has propelled my channel to 2,200 subscribers. Yeah, that's a lot in a short period of time. But I want you guys to subscribe to channels that interest you. Be the first to post comments and get noticed. Make sure your comments are relevant to the video and to your channel. Be honest to yourself and your viewers. Stay aligned with your vision. Don't be afraid to engage your viewers. Don't let negative comments get you down, and don't let the praise to get to your head. Starting and growing a YouTube channel requires significant commitment in time and effort. For many, it will generate income, but to all but a few, the income will be not enough to live on. I'm currently making about three to 400 US dollars a month from this channel, but if I add up just the time I spent developing content, it would be less than a dollar an hour. That's without taking into account the $1,700 I've spent on equipment. I'm not doing this for the money. I do enjoy filmmaking. This is a learning opportunity for me. My editing skills have greatly improved. So have my photography skills and my public speaking skills. This has become a hobby of mine. By the time my channel is six months old, I expect to be revenue neutral. 
I will have earned enough to cover my initial investments and use all future revenue to improve the channel and obtain new gear. For me, this is fun. I have a full-time job. I'm not willing to trade my day job for the uncertainty of having a YouTube gig. When you're developing your vision, goals, and objectives, be honest with yourself with what you want to get out of developing and growing a channel. It can be very emotionally challenging at times. At one point, I was developing seven videos a week. I was exhausted. While channel subscriptions and viewers were increasing, I was driven. I put out all my spare time into this channel. However, one day, despite my efforts, traffic just collapsed. I don't know why. It did recover a few days later, but at that time, I was dejected. I thought of walking away. And that's where your friends can come in. That where your, is where your network comes in to support you. I did review my goals and objectives. I decided to set reasonable expectations. Instead of, instead of trying to report on everything that was happening, I decided to produce, produce fewer videos, but produce better, more in-depth content. Focus on delivering a single quality video each week of 15 minutes or more, and cover key news and rumors. Pace yourself and rely on your network to get you through the ups and downs. You're not going to produce a professional looking channel immediately. This will come with time, but following all the recommendations that I've talked about will set you off in the right direction. If you guys have any questions or comments about this video, go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below. I do review all your comments and I do try to answer as many of them as I can within a day or two. Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.